welcome to another one of your practical sessions. Mr. Sharp and I have worked pretty hard on making this session as interactive as possible and very, very different. You've never done anything like this. You're actually able to work with um, a pair or a partner today. And in that partnership, it doesn't have to be in the same class. So someone from Mr. Sharp's class can work with somebody from my class. That's absolutely fine. So the first thing you're going to need to do is send an email, send a text message, get on FaceTime, set up a Zoom conference, Skype. I don't care how you do it. Send a carrier pigeon. Sort out who your partner is going to be. Once you've got your partner, we're giving you a series of challenges. Some of those challenges, both of you need to complete. And some of those challenges, just one of the pair needs to complete. The problem is you can't move on to the next stage until you fulfill the requirements of an individual stage. So what you're going to need to do is as you're completing a stage, either take video or photo evidence that you did participate and complete the challenge, and then confirm with your partner that you're done and move on to the next stage. Once you've completed all the stages, either email Mr. Sharp or myself, whoever your teacher is, or upload it through your Compass Learning Tasks, the evidence, and if that means multiple pictures, great. The more that we see, the better off this activity is. It's about working together, it's about communicating, it's about skill development, and it's a little bit about our fitness side of things. We hope you really enjoy today's session, and I'm gonna start explaining the activities now. One of the challenges that I'm gonna get you to do today is a running challenge. And the running challenge is actually completed for five minutes. Everyone will complete it for five minutes. However, some of us might be running a little bit more during that five minutes, and some of us might be running a little bit less during that five minutes, just depending on how you actually choose your area to run in. Some of us are gonna run a little bit harder and some of us run a little bit lighter depending on how your body's feeling. The only thing that you need is that you need a stopwatch on a phone or on your watch itself. And you need to find yourself a little bit of area, mine's near my driveway here, that you're gonna be running up and back. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna start the timer you're going to run up and back, and however long it takes you to complete that run, you get the same amount of rest. If it takes you 20 seconds, then have 20 seconds rest. If it takes you 45, then take 45 seconds rest. I'm going to do one repetition and show you. About to start my timer, and go. And that took me 14 seconds. So now I'm gonna have 14 seconds rest and I'm gonna repeat. I'm gonna do that until I get to five minutes. Here we go. It's another 13 seconds, so now 13 seconds rest. You get the picture, five minutes of this, then we move on to the next challenge. Hey guys, so one of the challenges for today that one of the members of your group needs to do is to go from the front door of your house to the back door of your house and take a ball or something like a ball. So I've got either a table tennis ball, or a tennis ball, which might be a bit harder, or you don't have anything like that around, just grab a piece of paper, scrunch it up into a ball shape for yourself. And here's what we're gonna do. You need to start that object, whichever one it might be that you're using, down on the floor, right near your front door. And what I need you to do, is I need you to be down on all fours, not on your knees, on your hands and feet. And the only way that you can move that ball to your back door is by blowing on it. Can't let your knees touch. You can see what I mean. See you soon. Challenges I'm going to get you to do today, and this one might be one of the hardest ones of the lot in terms of physical nature, is to find yourself two chairs or 
anything that you can get that's nice and stable. It might be a bench, it might be um, you know something propped up next to each other outside, it might be one of these um, retaining walls for example. I'm going to use two of my dining room chairs that I've set up behind me and you're going to try and hold yourself up just using your straight arm strength for a whole minute. Now the way this works is if you can only hold yourself up for 10 seconds that's fine but you've got to do another 50 seconds. So do another 10 and another 10 until you've completed that full minute. So once again, you're gonna need that stopwatch where you can press start and monitor how long you've been going and I'll show you what I mean by the balance. One arm on each of the chairs, try and get yourself where it's gonna be nice and stable. Don't jump into it, ease into it by taking your feet off the floor and try and keep them off the floor and remain as balanced as you possibly can while watching that timer and not letting those feet touch the ground. See if you can do that for a full minute without stopping. Hey students, one of your other members of your group today is gonna to complete another challenge. And so what you need is three pieces of paper, any scrap paper, grab it from a magazine, whatever you want. The first piece of paper I want you to screw up into a ball like this. The second piece of paper, what I would like you to do is just fold the piece of paper in half, long ways, and fold that piece of paper in half again, long ways, just to make a bit of a strip to place on your floor. The third piece of paper, follow closely, you're going to fold it in half width ways. Once that's completed, grab a pair of scissors, just around the outside edge, you can make this a little bit harder by making the cutout smaller. My little assistant's just come into the camera shot here. And cut yourself out a boundary. Come on, Papu. This is your target. You're gonna place this on the floor. Okay, so we've got our target on the floor. I'm gonna take my strip with me and my ball. I'm gonna go back about three or four big steps. So for me, this entire area. I'm gonna place that strip on the ground so I know where I'm shooting from. If you've got a longer hallway, you can make this harder for yourself. You can't go in front of that target, and you're gonna try and get this. Oh, okay. You're gonna try and get this ball to land in that square and stay in that square. Let's see how I go. Oh, and I would keep trying that until I've managed to succeed. Hi again, students. You need to set up a two bounce obstacle course for a ball. What you need to do is you need to select your ball. So probably won't work with that piece of paper. So hopefully you've got some sort of ball. If you need to use a soccer ball or a basketball, then go outside and make the two ball bounce, the two bounces quite challenging. But if you've got that ping pong ball, it's a perfect opportunity for you to use it inside. Be very, very careful, making sure you don't use something that's heavy or gonna mark walls or floors. So here's the setup that I've got. I've got one of my dining room chairs here followed by one of the chairs that my daughters use when they're sitting on their crafting table, followed by a little blending container. And what I'm gonna to need to do is I'm gonna to need to try and bounce this table tennis ball off both chairs and land it inside that container. Could take a little while, but we'll see how we go. a challenge. Um, as usual, Mr. Sharp and I would love your feedback. So feel free to send us an email. What worked? What didn't work? What do you want to see more of? We really want these practical sessions to be fun, enjoyable, uh, exciting for you. We understand this lockdown is, is quite a challenging time, um, unprecedented as I've said before. So really please take the time, send us an email, upload your pictures, upload your videos, show us how you did and give us some feedback on how you went today.